Hey everybody, this is Chris from 3D6 Charge, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I paint my Death Guard. Originally, the Death Guard mainly kept their armor as unpainted ivory gray ceramite, which reflected their Primarch Mortarian's practicality and pragmatism. Even before they fell into the service of the Chaos God Nurgle, they wore their battle damage and all of their dust and dirt and grime as badges of honor. This is the color scheme of Horus Heresy Era Death Guard, but also makes for a very striking paint scheme for 40k as well. If you like this type of content, please drop a like and subscribe, and comment below what models or color schemes you'd like to see in the next video. For this Plague Marine, I started off with a Korax White Spray Primer, but you could prime any color you like and then base coat it in Oathwind Gray or whatever white you want. The key colors that we'll need are going to be Known Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and Seraphim Sepia. You can use any black, brown, and sepia wash from any hobby manufacturer or just make your own washes. I'm going to make a video about making your own washes, so if that's ready, it'll pop up in the upper right corner now. The rest of the colors listed are more recommendations than recipe. You'll see how I use them and you can decide if you want to do something similar or go off on a different path. First thing we're going to do is thin our black wash down to a 1 to 1 ratio, so one part wash to one part water or medium. We want to thin the washes down because we're going to be applying a few layers, so thinning it down will let us do so without the color being overpowering. Dropper bottles can make this a lot easier, but if you don't have them, no problem, just use your brush. As for what to thin your wash with, water is fine. I'm using medium because I have a giant bottle of it and honestly I don't know how else I'm going to use it all. We want to apply the wash over the entire model. As you apply the wash, be mindful of where it pools up and use your brush to wick off the excess before it dries. Once that's dried, the black wash has settled nicely into the recesses and given our Plague Marine some shadows. Miniature painting is all about the idea of light and shadow and exaggerating them, so we're off to a great start. Let's get some brown wash ready the exact same way we did our black wash and add some more depth to them. Again, we want to apply this all over the model. Since the brown wash is, well, brown, it gives the model a warmer tone and makes them look a little dingier while smoothing out the transition to the shadows. Again, take care to wick up any excess with your brush. Here it is with the wash dried. For this next part, we'll use Seraphim Sepia thinned down the same way again, but this time we're only going to apply it to the parts of his armor that'll be that dirty white color. Try to keep it neat, but if you spill over, it's not that big a deal. If you want, you can wet your brush and wipe it away. With that, the white portion of the armor is done. We can come back to bring it to the next level with things like edge highlighting and streaks of rust, but for getting your guys to a battle ready standard, this armor looks just fine. Next, let's tackle the green parts of his armor. Most commonly, these are going to be your shoulders and some knee pads, but you can add in some variation by coloring in parts of the backpack. It can be a handy way of denoting which guys have special weapons at a glance. I'm applying one coat of Militarum Green, and once that's dry, going over it with a coat of Athonian Camo Shade. The green wash isn't very strong, so effectively what it does is help smooth out the transitions in the contrast paint. To show you one route you could take, on the shoulder pads here, I ended up doing two coats of Militarum Green, while on his grenades and uh, groin protector, I guess, I did just one coat. They result in different intensities of green, and I've seen both come out great. Aside from the metal trim, the armor is now done to a tabletop or battle-ready standard, so let's finish up the rest of the non-metallics. At this point, we've laid down the hallmarks of the Horus Heresy era Death Guard color scheme, so whatever you do next, you're most likely going to end up with models that are recognizable as such. Now, this is probably the part of the color scheme with the most room for creativity, so I don't even really like referring to it as a color scheme going forward. Like I said at the beginning, these are more recommendation than recipe. That being said, let's go through these next colors rapid fire. First up, I'm using a mix of Nazdrag Yellow and Plague Bearer Flesh on these tentacles and stuff coming out of his armor. You could use straight Plague Bearer Flesh as well. A contrast paint alternative could be Volupus Pink or Pink Horror if you're using standard paint. The next color I used was Emperor's Children on his exposed brain here and on some pustules on his armor. Aside from his brain, I would focus more on using this on spots where you might otherwise use Plague Bearer Flesh, but it would end up looking too homogenous and samey. It doesn't have to make sense. Don't forget, we're all grown men and women playing with plastic war dollies, so just do what you think looks best and brings you the most joy. We'll use some red and violet washes on the parts we just painted with Emperor's Children. The red wash will give the pink some depth and shading, while the violet wash will give it a bruised look. 
I'm using Citadel Caraberg Crimson and Druki Violet here, but I don't think brand matters too much in this instance. This guy's got an insectoid compound eye thing going on here that I'm going to apply Blood Angels Red to. This will work just fine for regular eye lenses too. For standard paint, I'd recommend a bright red like Citadel Mephiston Red. For any bits of parchment or paper, use Skeleton Horde or more sepia wash. Throw some Volupus pink on his loincloth, and then once that's dry, hit it with some black wash. The armor tubing looks to be mostly covered in either gross heat shrink or flesh, so let's get it with some Volupus pink too. This time we can use some red wash on it to give it a different look from the loincloth. I paint the pouches and wrappings on his weapons with snakebite leather. Look, no matter how you feel about Citadel's contrast paints, this one is fantastic. I feel like painting leather with standard paints comes out looking like pleather garbage unless you really take the time to paint all the scratches and cracks that give leather its texture. This is a wonderful shortcut for a model that doesn't even have an invulnerable save. Along the same lines as snakebite leather is Wildwood. This guy's mace has a wooden half, so we paint it with Wildwood. Easy peasy. For the teeth along his stomach here, we want these to stand out a little bit from the armor, so I'm going to take some Screaming Skull and apply a couple of thin coats. You could do the same for any horns or any other bony bits that you want to be more distinct from the armor. Throw a Skeleton Horde or Sepia Wash on it to shade the recesses. Here's the model done with everything except for the metallics, which we'll be tackling next. If possible, I like to save metallics for last. There's no artistic reason or anything, I'm just lazy. Metallic paints will leave mica flakes in your water cup, and when going from metallics to non-metallics, you want to change your water out. If you save metallic paints for the end, you can just sidestep that entirely. For the iron parts of his armor, I'm using Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver. You can use any silver color you like, but I really like the Game Air metallics, at least for silver metals. They're very smooth and have good coverage. Game Air Golds, not so much. I make sure to hit the weapons, any exposed tubing, the chainmail, and anything else that ought to be metal. Next up is bronze. Whatever color scheme of Death Guard you're painting, bronze is one of their hallmarks. I'm using Vallejo game color Brassy Brass for this one. I like to use it to break up big patches of what would otherwise be silver metal, like the banding on this axe and the head of his mace. Now that I'm done with the metallics, I noticed that the teeth of the axe were way too organic looking to be saw teeth and decide to paint them as actual teeth. Again, same method, two thin coats of Screaming Skull. After that's been taken care of, I'm throwing a healthy coat of brown wash over everything that just got painted. We're on the home stretch now. Since I'm done with the metallics, I'm going to immediately go against my own advice and go back to non-metallics because I really want to try out this fluorescent yellow from Vallejo Game Color. I think that this is going to make for a really sweet base color underneath a layer of Nurgle's Rot. I'm painting the drops of grossness coming off this guy, and I didn't record it, but I ended up with so pleased with how it came out, I redid his tongue in the same way to give it a little bit more punch and make it stand out more. I'm going to use this gore effect to give him some more visual interest on his weapons. This is Citadel Blood for the Blood God. All I do is take my brush and make quick short strokes. The trick is to make the strokes in the direction that the item would be moving. For the axe, it's pretty straightforward, but for the mace, I stab at it with the brush to get the look that I want. Okay, onto the base. I'm using some texture paint from Citadel, Sterling Battle Mud. Now, if I could go back in time, I would go buy a big 8 ounce jar of texture paint at the craft store and mix cheap craft store acrylic paint into it and base my entire armory with it. I'm a sucker for consistency though, so I'm going to keep using this stuff. It's actually pretty good and it's just a little pricey. Let the texture paint dry, and then hit it with some more brown wash. Once that's dry too, I dry brush the top of it with Screaming Skull. I ended up going too heavy with it in one spot, but no worries, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Using a dark green paint, I cover up that area. No need to be exact or use thin paint here. After that, give it a healthy layer of Nurgle's Rot. Instead of a spot that looks out a bit out of place because you are heavy with the dry brush, you've got a nice toxic sludge pool now. If you've got a mistake on his legs, or you just didn't feel like reaching your brush between his legs to paint the backside of his loincloth, I got another trick for you. Just stick a tuft of grass in front of it. I got these from Army Painter. They come with a bit of adhesive on them, but be sure to use actual super glue to place them down. Paint the rim of his base black, and here we are. 
a Finnish Plague Marine in the Horus Heresy color scheme. He's not going to win any awards, but he's pretty quick to paint, and he gets you to an easy tabletop standard with room for improvement. 